find us your right to care credit solutions. Uh, first and foremost, wish everyone's safe um, during this hurricane passing through South Florida, going up north to Tampa, Fort Myers. Hope you guys are being safe, staying off the road, taking extra precaution, right? All right, so let's get into business. So first off, this topic I'm gonna to talk about has to do with business credit, personal credit, and the information that people are telling you on social media about business credit, especially if you have bad credit, bad personal credit, they're telling you to open business credit and uh, move your whole life over to business credit. Uh, but that's not necessarily how it works, right? There's some truth to that, there's some myth to that. Listen, business credit is a great thing if it's used the right way, applied for the right way, but you do need personal credit. And these gurus are telling you, open if you have bad personal credit, open business credit and move your whole life over to it. But that's not how it works. You can't just move your whole life over to business credit and think that you have credit cards. And I know a lot of people's mentality, oh, I have business credit, I'm gonna run everything through business credit, and then I'm gonna try to write everything off um, as a tax write-off. The tax code is not written like that. So you need to understand that, right? So that's why I'm doing this topic today, explaining to you guys how business credit works, what your responsibility is, and what can be write-off, and what cannot be write-off. I'm not a tax guy. Right, but I have a very good knowledge base in taxes, business tax, personal tax. But I do suggest you speak to a CPA about this. Um, they'll tell you the same information, right? Um, understand that the tax code is not written the way a lot of these people are telling you business credit can be used for, if that makes sense, right? So let's break this down. Let's get into this video. And by the way, if you cannot see this display I have here on this board, there will be uh, a screenshot of this in this video as well so you can see what I'm talking about, right? So this is how it works. First off, when you open business credit, you have to have a legitimate business. And being an entrepreneur, having a business is not for everybody. I've said this in multiple videos already. They come to, it comes with a lot of responsibilities, a lot of things that you have to do on your part as an employer and as a business owner, right? So first off, opening a business, and you can't open a business and get a tax ID, like, oh, I have a business. like. That stop stop doing that that you don't have a business all right we've been in business for 16 years and it took us almost 10 years to get our business structured the way it is running smoothly right even with business credit so let me repeat that again before I get into this video having a business not for everybody sometimes it's easier just sticking to your nine to five and working for a company opening a business comes with a lot of responsibilities um, and it comes with a lot of requirements, especially when you get to expose yourself to IRS. What I mean by that, you get a tax ID, you get a bank account, that means you have to file taxes for that company. If you elect yourself as an S Corp, you have to file quarterly taxes or yearly taxes, right? If you don't file the taxes, um, it is a fee for that. Um, you get penalized for that, but you have to file taxes. And the tax code is not written where you can just completely wipe your whole life off as a, as a business expense. It doesn't work like that, right? So now I'm gonna get into the video and break it down for you guys. So business credit. Business credit, tax write-off, right? Um, so let's say you open an LLC. You're a nine to five person. You decide, listen, you know what? I have a great idea. I wanna open a company um, and leave my nine to five. I'm gonna go work for my own company, work for myself, okay? now. You have the LLC you create. Let's call it EXP LLC. EX, let's call it Experience LLC, right? You create a company called EXP LLC, right? That's your company. Now, this is the company. You're the employer of the company, right? And you're now you're an employee of the employer. So you're working for your company, what that means. You're either you could be a 1099 or a W2, however you want to gauge it. Again, you want to speak to your accountant about that. W-2 is the way to go, so you have a paper trail that you're getting a payroll, you're paying payroll taxes. So if you want to get a loan in the future, apply for a car or a home, even some credit cards, some banks may ask you to show you proof of income, you have a W-2, right? So EXP LLC is the, is the LLC. Under that LLC, let's say your company does, I don't know, um, pet distribution of pet products, whatever you want to do, right? Under that business, you have, you got a loan. First off, it takes, it's not, you cannot build business credit overnight. And all these gurus are telling you, open an LLC and build business credit. It's nearly impossible to get business credit 
on a company that's less than six months old, right? So you have to PG things in your name, which has come back to the point of the message. You have to have good personal credit, okay? Um, so, and these guys are making it sound like it's so easy. It's not. It's really hard. And don't get me wrong. It's not impossible to do to get business credit where you don't got to PG it. But it has to be built the right way. The business has to be open for a certain amount of time. You have to show revenue and so forth. So let's say you have the LLC. The LLC, we're, we're gonna move forward in time. The LLC has been open for two years. You have a loan, you have a credit card. Um, well, under, this, under the LLC, you need to have a QuickBooks accounting software, right? This is how you're gonna track your receivables, your a and R, right? You're gonna track your receivables coming into the company as an expense, what's going on, right? Now, as an employer, the LLC is an employer, you're an employee of your company. You're gonna go W-2 or 1099, whichever one you wanna go, right? The employer has a payroll for you. So let's say you work 40 hours, you're gonna submit it to your payroll company. EXP LLC is gonna cut a payroll for you to the payroll company. They're gonna pay your payroll taxes and um, they're gonna you know, file your, your tax returns for you. Then they're gonna cut a check out of your, your, business, check, your business checking account which is you doing all this work, right? But it's treated as a company. It's holding as a company legitimately, right? Now, under a company, let's say you have a car and you have a home, right? Um, now, if you have a home-based business, you can write X amount of percentage off of that as an expense. Uh, the car you can write off an expense, but you're still PG in this, right? So, but here's where the confusion is coming. These people are telling you open business credit Stop using your personal credit. So basically, people's mindset, oh, I'm gonna have my personal expense, um, my lifestyle, I wanna go to dinner, I wanna party, I wanna go shopping, Gucci, Louis, all this stuff. I'm gonna write off to business credit. You cannot write that off. If you get audited by IRS, that's not a business expense. What you do, you have a business credit card and all your business transaction for your business is done under that business credit card, you keep the receipts. You do not want to get audited by IRS for filing tax returns and trying to write everything off. You can't have a business that makes $25,000 a year, but you have $85,000 in write-off. Like that's a red flag. You do not want to get involved with the IRS and the IRS auditing you because once they audit you, they're going to, every three years, they're going to keep auditing you and auditing you. And the IRS does not audit you right off the bat. They wait three years compounding interest, they build a case, and then you're in their system where they're gonna audit you all the time. The thing is, you have to have personal credit. You have to have, you have to separate the two. You have to separate your personal life from your business life. You cannot open business credit and run a run all your personal expenses to business credit and think you're gonna get a write-off at the end of the year for that. It's not gonna work. It, no accountant or no CPA, no legitimate CPA would even tell you to do that. And especially if it's not classified as a business expense. Right. Um, so the point of what I'm trying to tell you is that these people are telling you open business credit, forget your personal credit. You don't need personal credit and you can run everything to business credit. You can't do that, guys. You cannot do that. You're just looking for problems with IRS. Again, you do not want to have be caught up with the IRS. You don't want to get audited by IRS because they are not going to leave you alone. They're not going to leave you alone. I have clients that in that situation that try to Oh, I don't have personal credit, so I can't get personal credit cards, but I have business and I got a business credit card. I'm gonna use my business credit card to swipe my all my whole lifestyle through business credit and be a writer. You cannot. You have to separate yourself. When you have a legitimate company, you have you as an employee collecting a payroll, and the company has paying you as an employee. All right. You cannot co-mingle it. It cannot be co-mingled at all, guys. And that's what these people are telling you. Second of all, or fourth of all, I should say, we spoke about a lot of things. Coming back to business credit, it's not hard, but it's not something that happens overnight. It's not, definitely not, does not work the way these people are telling you that, oh, open business credit, you can get this credit card, that credit card, you're not gonna be a PG. You could buy a car under your business credit, you don't need to PG it. Oh, um, if your family member wants to buy a car, open an LLC and put the car in the LLC and let them pay the LLC. And if they don't pay the car, you can take it back and put it on Toro. Listen. It doesn't work like that in the real world. Trust me when I'm telling you this. And I'm not telling you to discourage you. I'm telling you it could be done. It has to be done the right way. It does not happen overnight. It takes years to get things set up that way. A lot of clients call me and ask me, hey, I want to get loans. I want to get funding. 
first off, do you understand what funding is? When you say funding, are you talking about funding on a credit card or are you talking about funding from a bank loan, right? When you want to get funding from a bank, you want to get loans like loans here, you want to get loans to leverage your business and grow your business, you have to have something called a PNL, profit and loss statement and a tax return for that business for 24 months. It has to show that the company's making money, the company's paying out bills and there's a profit. They're not running the company at a loss every year. If you're running the company at a loss, then how are you gonna pay the loans back, right? Uh, and these are the things people are not telling you. You have to have a profit and loss statement, you have to have a tax return file for that company because that's what the banks are gonna verify that this company is legit and is making money, you can pay the loan back. So, and also, back to the employee part of it, if you're an employee, you could go 1099, I'll see a lot of, I see a lot of people doing it, but you wanna be W2 because you wanna have a paper trail that you you have a pay stub, you're getting paid from your company, you're paying payroll taxes, because if you don't have this, when you try to apply for a loan, you cannot prove, prove source of income. You can't buy a house if you don't have a W2. It shows you're not working. You need a W-2. Uh, it's much easier to do things the right way than to try to cut corners and spin tails around, like just trying to figure things out and keep running into roadblocks. The more you try to cut corners, guys, you just end up in square one. But the main topic of this message is stop listening to these people that tell you you don't need personal credit. All banks are giving you business credit, you don't need a PG. It doesn't work like that. And if anyone feels that what I'm saying is not true, test it. You know, go ahead and try it, you know. But try it legitimately and, and don't listen to all these gurus that's telling you all these fly by night information. It doesn't work like that. I'm telling you that. Listen, I own seven businesses. Trust me, I didn't get seven businesses running the way it's running right now. It, it took a lot of work, it took a lot of dedication, it took paying things on time, doing things the right way. I, in the beginning, I had to PG a few things, of course. Then as the company built credit over time, things start, and the business credit started building under the company, things started coming off of my name and going into the business legitimately. Don't get it twisted. I do not co-mingle my personal life with my business life. I'm a separate entity. I pay taxes. I file my tax return. Uh, our company is an S-Corp, so it's a pass-through entity. So whatever profit or whatever we have at the end of the year, I file taxes on that, right? Um, but... The point, again, of this message is it's not as easy as people are saying, you don't need personal credit. You do need personal credit, especially moving forward now in the new year. Banks have caught on to all these little scams everyone is running and all these messages people are putting out there. They're tightening up on how they extend credit and business credit. If you have any questions about this video, comments, drop it below, and I'll try to answer it for you guys. Talk to you soon.